Welcome to Space Spacetainment. In today's video, we're going to look at a Yellowstone volcanic eruption that could crack Earth wide open. So make sure to watch the entire video. But before we get into the video, hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed to Space Spacetainment. Let's get started with the video we have for you today. One of the most remarkable sites on Earth is Yellowstone National Park in Montana. It boasts several hot springs and other geothermal characteristics, in addition to its enormous volcano, which is still active. Visitors can observe bubbling mud pots, steam coming from the surface, and even a man exploding. Wildlife, including bison, antelopes, wolves, and bears may all be seen there. Yellowstone's location is rather far away, and the geothermal characteristics there may be very dangerous. About 3.5 thousand square miles of Yellowstone National Park lie under the intense sun of a volcano. While some pots went as far as Montana and Idaho, Wyoming hosted the majority of the celebrations. Beautiful alpine rivers and luxuriant woods may be found in Yellowstone. Yellowstone National Park is located on top of a mega volcano. A super volcano which spews out more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of gas, ash, magma, and rock, is now active. Supervolcanoes that have recently erupted include Lake Toba in Indonesia, Lake Topo in New Zealand, and Yellowstone National Park in the United States. In the past seven months, there has been a significant and quick rise inside the volcanic system. The increase of magma below the surface is most likely what is causing this rise. Geologists are closely monitoring the situation, even if there isn't a direct threat of an eruption. Join us as we go to Wyoming to experience Yellowstone National Park's majestic majesty and to learn more about the large sudden uplift in the volcanic system that Yellowstone National Park authorities have discovered and the threat it presents. The Yellowstone hotspot has stayed constant for a considerable amount of time, despite the southwestward drift of North America. What is presently known as the southeastern section of Oregon is connected to the ancient eruptions that occurred in the Yellowstone area. The Yellowstone supervolcano, which has had three major eruptions, the most recent of which happens 640,000 years ago, caused the most recent breakouts in the northeastern region of the United States. The tiny hot spring geysers and other hydrothermal phenomena are caused by the supervolcano. The supervolcano also influenced the period of frigid weather where the park is located. A caldera forms when lava or magma is ejected from a volcano, and it has the shape of a bowl. The megavolcanoes in Yellowstone Park which have a width of around 34 miles, are currently dormant. The cold period is filled with water over time and precipitation, creating an environment that is home to many different animal species. Yellowstone National Park is a safe haven for one of the largest supervolcanoes in the world that is exhibiting indications of life, according to park scientists. The yellow sandstone that can be found nearby gave the park its name when it was formed in 1872. The volcano and the massive Yellowstone are joined in northern Wyoming. We are aware that the supervolcano is situated on a heated zone made of magma or molten and semi-molten rock, which accounts for the ground lip sensing. The earth swells as this magma pushes into a magma chamber reservoir that is four to six miles under Yellowstone National Park. The ground sinks back down when the lava hardens and cools. Since 1923, volcanic activity has been studied by volcanologists, and between 2004 and 2009, the ground rose 9.8 inches. However, in 2010, the ground began to sink, prompting many experts to speculate on when and how catastrophic the next Yellowstone eruption will be. The main concern, according to renowned volcanologist and University of Northern Colorado science professor Dr. Steve Anderson, is what would happen if Yellowstone began trembling tomorrow. I don't think we know exactly what to expect, he continues. According to experts, it wouldn't be anything less than a catastrophe. 
The high continental divide separating the northern and central Rocky Mountains was created by the Yellowstone Plateau volcanic eruption. With the exception of the Eastern Snake River Plain, which extends to the southeast as a structural depression measuring roughly 350 kilometers in length, the plateau has an average height of 7,900 feet and is flanked on all sides by hilly terrain with peaks as high as 13,000 feet. The 17,000 square kilometer Yellowstone Plateau has been formed over a period of 2.2 million years by cataclysmic eruptions, profound ground collapse, thick lava flows, the ground rising, persistent faulting, and the erosive strength of flowing water and highs. Yellowstone is currently an inactive volcano with low levels of restlessness, according to Dr. Jacob Lowenstein, the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory's research geologist. He adds that there is no current activity going on that would indicate anything happening, and if something was coming, there is nothing to show at this time. Two of the three volcanic cycles that have occurred in the Yellowstone Plateau volcanic region during the past two million years are regarded as some of the most destructive volcanic eruptions in recorded history. Lava flows from the most recent Pitchstone Plateau eruption, which occurred 77,000 years ago, were confined to the chilly air above what is now Yellowstone National Park. 2.1 million years ago, the initial eruption at the Huckleberry Ridge tops left a 75-kilometer-wide crater and discussed volcanic deposits. When the missile belt erupted 1.3 million years ago, the second cycle started. The most recent activity on the Yellowstone Plateau was 640,000 years ago, when a lava watercourse known as Terra 45, distorted by 85 kilometers in size. Between 180 and 70,000 years ago, 600 cubic kilometers of rhyolitic lava flowed into the cold epoch. Nine magmatic eruptions have taken place since then, but throughout the Holocene, the last 11,700 years of Earth's history, hydrothermal eruptions happened. Mallard Lake and South Creek are the two locations where the land surface has uplifted and subsided. These areas are referred to as resurgent domes in geology. A resurgent dome is a dome-shaped structure that appeared due to the floor's expansion and polarization caused by a change in motion in the magma chamber beneath it. Hot springs and geysers are the only geological features present in Yellowstone National Park at the moment. The largest site owner with the highest concentration of species and hydrothermal systems at the moment is Yellowstone. Due to the huge networks of bots connected to the supervolcano and the surrounding topography, the area is one of the most seismically active in the world. A plateau near the Teton and Hagen-like forts is necessary for large earthquakes to occur often. In 1959, the Hagen-like faults ruptured, severely destroying the area. These earthquakes happen when the friction between tectonic plates causes them to age, and the strain at the edge overcomes the friction. The ground underneath us trembles as a result of waves of energy that form in the Earth's crust and travel there. Massive, erratic, solid rocks that make up the continental and oceanic tectonic plates. On July 22, 59 earthquakes were registered in the area by the seismograph stations operated by the University of Utah, which supervises the management and monitoring of the Yellowstone Seismic Network. The primary event of the month was a minor 3.1 magnitude earthquake that occurred 40 miles southwest of the region with the gigantic hot springs. In Yellowstone, these earthquake series account for almost half of all seismicity. The old faithful is a geyser that spews more than 14,000 liters, or 3,700 gallons, of hot water more than 30 meters into the air every 91 minutes in the upper geyser basin of Yellowstone. The Washburn expedition made the discovery in 1970. It was so named because of the park's regular and predictable eruptions, which have totaled more than a million since Yellowstone became a national park in 1972. Old Faithful, the most well-known geyser in the world, 
erupts 20 times every day. These eruptions last between 1.5 and 5 minutes and range in height from 100 to 180 feet, with an average height of 130 to 140 feet. Due to groundwater buildup, as reported by the GPS network, Yellowstone's activity stayed at background levels throughout July, with significant rain and snow melt ending record floods in the Yellowstone region. June was a little more exciting than usual. Between June 10 and June 13, there were a number of landslides and rockfalls, especially near Yellowstone National Park's northern boundary. The region's infrastructure was seriously damaged, and some roads and bridges were washed away, cutting off whole settlements. While hydrothermal activity and destructive seismic activity were unaffected by the floods, there was a significant impact on geyser activity. Because geysers collide more frequently during seasons of heavy precipitation than they do during dry seasons of the year, they started to erupt more frequently. Despite being little, the time change is statistically significant. On June 10 and June 20, 2022, the steamboat geyser erupted twice, producing eight big eruptions each time. 149 earthquakes were discovered by the seismograph stations of the University of Utah. GPS locations in Yellowstone, known as ERA and requiring Norris's geyser basin, have detected a few millimeters of uplift since the start of the summer. When the snow melts and seeps into the earth, making it swell, this uplifts the curse. Since 2015, there has been a tendency for cold with an annual sinking of a few millimeters. Over the previous few years, a yearly average sinking of two to three centimeters, or one inch, has been seen. Although the Yellowstone supervolcano is said to be exceedingly unlikely to erupt, new subterranean activity raises concerns about how strong it may be. However, even though the majority of these tremors are barely felt, they provide scientists with information about how quickly the magma chambers beneath Yellowstone are erupting. This increased shaking and quivering throughout Yellowstone is a sign that new magma puddles have recently drained into the reservoir. Yellowstone's ground surface has been growing at the quickest rate in the last 10 years. Because it is impossible to constantly watch and evaluate every tiny aspect of what is happening in Yellowstone National Park, Geologists find it difficult to forecast the supervolcano's future course of action. There are no imminently dangerous situations, according to doctors, despite the increasing number of treatments. However, studying previous eruptions might offer some useful information. The gaps between the three massive eruptions over the last 2.1 million years range from 600,000 to 800,000. The most recent significant eruption, which took place 640,000 years ago, left its mark on the entire park, as well as on the surroundings thousands of miles away. The Yellowstone supervolcano filled itself up with each eruption, erupting into forests, mountains, and everything else in the area. Each of the three dangerous eruptions emitted enormous amounts of volcanic ash, gas, magma, and other volcanic debris that shrouded most of the continental United States. In Yellowstone, an eruption that forms a caldera will pose a huge natural hazard. Scientists estimate that the 1980 Mount St. Helens explosion, which killed 56 people and countless animals and scorched hundreds of square kilometers of Washington and Oregon, was 1,000 times smaller than the most recent Yellowstone eruption. When the Yellowstone supervolcano last erupted, a little plume of hot rock, ash, and deadly gases was propelled thousands of meters into the air. Swift currents of hot, dry rock pieces and gases, known as pyroclastic flows, move over the terrain, burying and destroying the pots, and one third of the continent may have been submerged in darkness. Scientists are keeping an eye on Yellowstone, which is now inactive, and trying to estimate when it may erupt. Yellowstone's slumber does not mean that the brewing falls under the park and will not emerge, even though they have been contained for thousands of years. 
If eruptions were to happen, the issue is when and with what ferocity. It would be a disaster for the entire world. Both lava flows that would completely cover the states and a cloud of ash and particles that would block out the light and temper the Earth's climate might result from the supervolcano. For the time being, park officials advise visitors to exercise caution and be aware of any potential hazards. When will the Yellowstone supervolcano erupt? Put your comments below. Make sure to hit the like button if you got value from this video and make sure you're subscribed to Space Daymont. I'll see you in the next video. See you in the